Example 10, express as a quotient and remainder. We have our improper rational function here. This is the second example. If you haven't already done so, I would recommend you check out example 9. I'm not going to be quite as detailed in my explanation here. So we're going to take the uh, dividend here and we're going to write it on top, uh, underneath our division step. x to the power 4 plus 3x cubed plus 2x squared. Now there's no x term you'll notice here. Um, quite a, a few, uh, quite often, it doesn't really matter. Usually, um, it kind of works out that it kind of jumps that term anyway, but there are uh, occasions when you can't, and you'll end up you're finding that you've got an x term that you're subtracting from. So it's usually good practice just to put it in. And if you don't need it, that's great. But then, just like when you're doing synthetic division, um, it's kind of sometimes important to have that in. So get into the habit of just adding in any missing powers of x. Our divisor is x squared plus 2x. So, uh, what we're doing here, we are, as we did in the last example, starting off finding our highest order term in the dividend and our highest order term in the divisor and working out the answer to that. x to the power 4 divided by x to the power 2 is x to the power 2. And we're going to write that above the existing x to the power 2 term in our dividend just to give it a kind of position. That kind of tells us that we could have a maximum of three terms in our quotient. That's one of the reasons why we set it out like that. It kind of gives a sense of how many terms we could get. Okay. So what do we do then? Once we've worked out we've got x, we would multiply that by the divisor and we write down our answer underneath x squared times x squared is x to the 4. x squared times 2x is 2x cubed plus x cubed. And then we are going to subtract that from the term above. We bracket around it just to remind ourselves that we're subtracting everything. x to the 4 minus x to the 4 is 0. 3x cubed subtract 2x cubed. It is 1x cubed. So just write x cubed here. And we can bring down next term which is plus 2x squared. What can we do? We then repeat our step. Highest order term x cubed divided by the x squared again gives you plus 1x. So we're going to write that in plus 1x. Now there is an example of where we're going to need that x term. Are we? Well, let's check and see. Um, we need to position it there at least. Uh, x times x cubed is x times x squared is x cubed, and x times 2x is plus 2x squared. Uh, so we subtract that and we get nothing in the first term. x cubed minus x cubed is nothing, and 2x squared minus 2x squared is also nothing. Uh, so we bring down our next term, which is 0x. And because we nothing we can do with that, you know, we could bring down the whole thing. And e effectively, then, because 0x and minus 3, which is really just negative 3, um, because that's all we've got left, we can tell that we can't do any more division. We have still got a space here for a constant term. So there potentially could be another division. But the order of this remainder here, which is negative 3, is less than the order of the divisor x squared. So if it's less than an x squared term, like an x term or a constant term, the division has to stop and we're left with our remainder. And you can see why if we hadn't put the, um, well, if we hadn't put the, the, the 0 x in there, uh, we would have had room for the, the two terms. But it just keeps it all uh, in order if you add in the missing powers.
Now, interesting, we've got a negative remainder. So I just want to make a little point here. We can write out our original function x to the 4 plus 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3 over x squared. Use a new ruler here. Over x squared plus 2x. So we're saying that that is going to be equal to our quotient and remainder. Our quotient is x squared plus x, x squared plus x, and we've got this negative 3 as a remainder. And that means that effectively we've got negative 3 over x squared plus 2x as a remainder. So there's a couple of ways in which we could write that. What we could do, if you were normally writing things out, I would be recommending that you write it like that. Simplify it by bringing the negative sign from the 3 down to the beginning. Okay, and we've done that with our partial fractions work. The only problem is that when we go on to split up this remainder fraction into partial fractions, if you leave the negative sign behind and then you swap in a couple of fractions instead of it, you'll probably forget about the fact that you've still got to multiply your fractions through by negative 1. So at this stage, my recommendation is always that if you have a negative remainder, that you still add the fraction, x squared plus 2x, and just write in the negative 3 as a, <coughs> a numerator in its own right. It looks a wee bit clumsy. It's not what you would... Uh, do if you were giving your final answer. But at this stage, we are going to be going on to use partial fractions. If you weren't, then yeah, for sure, bring the minus sign down. But if you are going on to make partial fractions of that, leave the negative 3 there.